This is a car engine, a machine that generates thousands of controlled explosions every minute to convert gasoline into mechanical power. Today, we'll break down this engine piece by piece, revealing its internal components and how they work together. First, let's explore how the engine transforms fuel into mechanical energy through a process known as the four-stroke cycle. The four-stroke cycle consists of four distinct phases or strokes that continuously repeat. Those are intake, compression, power, and exhaust. The cycle begins with the piston moving downward in the cylinder. This downward motion creates a strong vacuum inside the cylinder. At the same time, the intake valve opens, allowing a mixture of air and fuel to rush into the cylinder from the intake manifold. Once the piston reaches the bottom of the cylinder, both valves close tight, trapping the fuel mixture inside the cylinder. The piston then moves upward, compressing the mixture into the small combustion chamber at the top of the cylinder. Just as the piston reaches the top of the cylinder, with the fuel mixture tightly compressed, the spark plug fires. This creates a controlled explosion that rapidly expands the hot gases, forcing the piston downward with tremendous force. This is the only stroke that produces power. The other three strokes just prepare for this moment. The expanding gases push down on the piston with forces that can exceed 4,000 pounds. This force transfers through the connecting rod to rotate the crankshaft, creating the mechanical energy that eventually moves the car. After the power stroke drives the piston to the bottom, the crankshaft's momentum forces the piston upward again. The exhaust valve opens and the rising piston pushes the spent gases out of the cylinder through the exhaust port. When the piston reaches the top, the cylinder is cleared of exhaust gases and ready for the next intake stroke. The exhaust valve closes, the intake valve opens, and the cycle begins again. Now let's take a look at various components of a car's engine and how they work together. The engine frame is composed of various sections. The engine block serves as the foundation of the engine. It is a precisely machined piece of metal that contains the cylinders where combustion occurs. The walls of these cylinders must be smooth enough to allow the pistons to slide freely while being strong enough to contain the explosive forces generated during combustion. At the bottom of the engine block is the crankcase, where the crankshaft operates. This area contains oil that lubricates the moving parts and provides a sealed environment for the engine's internal components. Bolted to the top of the engine block, the cylinder head acts as a lid for each cylinder. It houses the intake and exhaust valves, which control the flow of air and fuel into the cylinder and the exit of exhaust gases. The head also contains threaded holes for spark plugs, which provide the electrical spark necessary to ignite the compressed fuel mixture. Above the cylinder head is the engine cover, which provides cover to the camshaft and the valves. An oil pan is attached to the bottom of the engine block. The large bulge inside the oil pan is called the sump. It contains engine oil, which is used for lubrication, and the pump, which delivers engine oil to all the vital parts. Inside each cylinder, a piston moves up and down with mechanical precision. The piston is a cylindrical piece of metal with a flat top and grooves cut around its circumference. These grooves hold compression rings, which are spring-loaded metal bands that press outward against the cylinder wall. The compression rings serve two critical functions. First, they prevent combustion gases from escaping past the piston, which maintains the pressure necessary for efficient combustion. Second, they regulate oil distribution, ensuring that the cylinder walls remain lubricated without allowing excessive oil to enter the combustion chamber. Beneath the compression rings, additional oil control rings manage lubrication more precisely. These rings scrape excess oil from the cylinder walls during the piston's downward stroke, preventing oil from burning in the combustion chamber and thus reducing emissions. Attached to the piston is a short, rigid rod called a connecting rod. It serves as a link between the piston and the crankshaft. The piston connects to the rod through a steel pin that passes through holes in both parts. This pin becomes a pivot point that lets the connecting rod swing as the piston moves up and down. 
the rod's bottom end splits into two pieces that wrap around the crankshaft and bolt together, creating a strong but movable connection. The crankshaft is one of the most ingenious design solutions in an engine. This heavy steel shaft transforms the straight line motion of the pistons into the rotational motion necessary to turn the wheels. It achieves this through a series of offset sections known as cranks, each of which is connected to a piston through a connecting rod. As each piston moves downward during its power stroke, it pushes on its connecting rod, which then causes the crankshaft to rotate. The offset design means that when one piston is at the top of its stroke, the others are at different phases in their cycles. This staggered approach helps smooth out the pulsating forces that could otherwise lead to excessive vibration. The crankshaft must endure enormous forces while rotating thousands of times per minute. To manage these forces and prevent destructive vibrations, engineers add counterweights to the shaft. At one end of the crankshaft is the flywheel, a heavy wheel that stores rotational energy. The mass of the flywheel helps the engine run smoothly between power strokes, maintaining momentum when individual cylinders aren't producing power. The flywheel also serves as the connection point for the starter motor and the transmission system. Each cylinder needs a precisely controlled way to let fresh fuel and air in while allowing burned gases to escape. This happens through valves that open and close at exactly the right moments in each cycle. Most cylinders have at least two valves, an intake valve and an exhaust valve. The intake valve controls the flow of fresh air and fuel mixture into the cylinder. The exhaust valve allows burned gases to escape after combustion. When closed, a powerful spring holds each valve firmly against its seat, creating a gas-tight seal. Opening these valves requires overcoming spring pressure plus the forces from combustion. The camshaft handles this job through specially shaped lobes called cams. As the camshaft rotates, each cam pushes against components that ultimately open the corresponding valve. The camshaft connects to the crankshaft through a belt or chain, but it spins at exactly half the crankshaft's speed. This timing ensures each valve opens once every two crankshaft rotations, which matches the four-stroke cycle perfectly. Getting the right amount of fuel to each cylinder requires careful engineering. The process starts at your fuel tank, where gasoline waits until needed. An electric fuel pump draws gas from the tank and pushes it toward the engine under pressure. Before reaching the cylinders, fuel passes through filters that catch dirt and particles that could damage delicate engine parts or clog tiny passages. The clean fuel then reaches the carburetor or fuel injection system where it mixes with air in precisely controlled ratios. This fuel-air mixture travels through the intake manifold, a network of tubes that distributes the mixture evenly to each cylinder. The manifold connects to ports in the cylinder head that lead directly to the intake valves. When these valves open during the intake stroke, the mixture rushes into the cylinder, ready for compression and combustion. The exhaust system removes the waste products of combustion while reducing noise and controlling emissions. Like the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold consists of connected tubes, but these collect burned gases from each cylinder and funnel them into a single stream. Hot exhaust gases first pass through the catalytic converter, which uses chemical catalysts to transform harmful substances into less dangerous ones. It converts poisonous carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and water vapor. The muffler reduces noise by forcing exhaust gases through chambers and baffles. These obstacles slow the gas flow and cancel out sound waves, dramatically reducing the noise that would otherwise escape. The treated exhaust gases finally exit through the tailpipe at the back of the car. When all these systems work together, they create a machine capable of converting liquid fuel into mechanical motion with remarkable efficiency. This is how a car engine works. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support our small channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you for watching.